Well, look what the cat dragged in. So I was cleaning this up. I just got this um, a couple of days ago from Goodwill. It's an IBM XT, an original IBM XT uh, 5160. This is what I cut my teeth on. Um, IBM, when they came out with the personal computer, uh, it was the 5150 model. And then shortly after the PC came the XT. This is um, in the early 80s. So that's how old this is. Um, I've already taken the liberty of taking the screws out but uh, and cleaning the case up. And I also cleaned the keyboard up. But it dawned on me as I was cleaning the keyboard um, and I got to the case, I was thinking, as I was undoing the screws, I'm thinking I should take a video of this. And so that's how we got here. I haven't opened the case yet. I've taken the screws out. I cleaned up the case. I've cleaned up the keyboard. I haven't cleaned up the monitor yet. That's next. But I don't want to drag you through all the cleaning. Basically, I have my, my Windex here that I use. Um, I use alcohol as well, maybe vinegar, maybe even baking soda, but I haven't needed it on this. This is cleaned up really, really nicely, really well. The only thing that I needed to do on it was um, I already had some from my past uh, restorations is put the little cork um, uh, rubber, well, rubber feet, <laughs> the little cork pads on the bottom. Um, and these are um, vintage. So did that. That's all I did. So let's go through this journey together and, and let's see what we got. So let's open this puppy up. Wow. So here's the cool thing. Um, I'm glad we're doing this together. Um, my surprises will be your surprises and vice versa. This is really clean. I mean, there is very little dust on the hard drive. Um, definitely an original full-size hard drive. It says Tandon on the side. Model uh, TM502. So 10 megabyte hard drive. 360 floppy, original, IBM. We have um, the hard drive controller, the floppy controller. Oh, it looks like it has an AST six pack. Definitely recognize these because there's the, um, the, the dip switches there. There's a battery just behind this cable and it's not a vertex battery like those cylinders that always leak. Um, so kind of like the, 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 the small little wafer watch battery kind of things. So definitely be ordering a new battery because I'm sure this one's dead. Um, and then we have a CGA card, and I already knew that we'd have the CGA card because it did come with a CGA monitor, an original IBM CGA monitor to boot. So, there's the monitor. So why don't we do this? Um, let me focus in and you and I can witness this boot up together for the first time. I, normally, you know, some folks take the cards out to check to see the capacitors aren't there's any, no shorts or anything like this, but I'm telling you, I'm going to go for it because I see nothing. Uh, this board is clean. So worst case scenario, we unplug it if we smell smoke. So I already got the monitor plugged in. I already got the keyboard plugged in and let's see what we got. Oh, I see the hard drive light flickering a little. So that's a good thing. I should see the floppy come up in a second or two. The screen shows memory. 
hopefully the hard drive has DOS on it. Look at F1. There's the floppy drive going. There's the hard drive going. <gasps> Look at that. That is a sight for sore eyes. So that's the hard drive directory. Definitely has an AST6 pack, like I said. I already knew that though, because it booted up with AST looking for the clock. Um, definitely the battery's dead. There's no question about that. Um, do a quick directory, even though it already did it. The volume name is Allison. So someone named Allison had this computer. That is sweet. You see, just in case I'm out of focus here. So some of the things on here, they've got form fill. I remember that Lotus, Lotus is on here. So this is obviously a business computer. This is, and then I see all the AST uh, programs on there. These are all the directories that are on there. Amy, ABC. So we have some good stuff that's still on this hard drive. So that is awesome. So now the question that I had already pondered when I got this system, and uh, ah, let's see what version of DOS is on here. 3.1. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is update DOS to 3.3 because it'll read the larger drives um, and I have a plan for that. So that's the first thing. 3.3 is also a lot more stable than 3.1. It's very popular. So um, that's the first thing we're going to do. But before that, let me shut this off and get some of this noise out of the way. Oh, that is terrific. I'll do a check disk on it later. Um, and that's how you shut computers off back in the day. You just <laughs> turned the power switch off. There was no little icon that you press, um, you know, telling you to power down gracefully or whatever. Um, so here's what we're going to do. How am I going to get DOS 3.3 on there? Um, yeah, I got a blank diskette, but it just, <laughs> I don't have DOS 3.3 on a floppy. But I can ask someone for it, get it on there and push it to the drive. But how am I going to get other stuff on here in and out of this computer? So it dawned on me when I bought this, I was thinking about this while waiting for it to arrive. Um, first, I'm going to do this GoTech thing. I've always wanted to get one of these GoTechs. Um, people in the Amiga you know, realm use them a lot. It emulates a floppy drive and it actually it goes beyond that. I mean, you can store various partitions, various images, you know, on there. So I'm thinking, first of all, you know, I've always wanted to go through the mods and play around with the GoTech. So I'm going to, you're going to go through this journey with me. We're going to do this together. So I'm going to um, set up the GoTech. I'm going to update it with um, um, the, the firmware on it because I understand the original firmware isn't very good. Um, and I'll modify it to use with the PCXT. My plan though is not to take an easy route and use it just on the inside floppy ribbon. What I'm going to do is I want to see if I can just make this a little more permanent than that and make this external and use the, uh, the I don't know, it's 36, 37 pin um, connector on the back um, because the PCXT had the ability to connect to external um, floppy um, or hard drives as well. Actually, I don't remember if it was just external floppies or hard drives, but you could connect external drives to it up to four. So we're going to use the GoTech and that's how I'm going to get some of the files initially on this. I'll make this machine thinks the GoTech is another floppy and I'm going to use the external port for that. And that way I can always just have this hooked up um, externally because I want to leave this as vintage as possible. Then the other thing that I got for it was this. So this is an ethernet uh, network card. So it's a, it's a three comp card with an RJ45 connection on it. So I plan on using the GoTech to upload 
the three com drivers to this and then loading an FTP client on there. And what I'm going to do is I, I have an FTP site set up at home. So I will, once I have the network card going, I will be able to just FTP stuff in and out of this computer. I won't really need the GoTech anymore, but I just want to mess with that and take you through the journey of how I do. You know, I've seen a lot of videos online in preparation for this, and some of them are kind of convoluted. Everybody does it a different way. So I'm gonna show you my way from what I've learned and from what I think should happen. And then we'll get the network driver on here, and then we'll use the network card to connect to my FTP, and that's how we'll go back and forth with files going forward. So that's the game plan. Let's take this journey together, and let's see where it takes us. Retro computing, you gotta love it.